one month before the reveal of the new C7 Corvette at the North American International Auto Show. We previewed the next generation of this legendary mark at a studio just outside of Detroit. New cars come and go, but an all new Corvette is something as rare as an ice cube in the desert. This is only the seventh time this hallowed beast has been made over since its debut as a concept in 1953. And from what I've seen so far, its pedigree has never been stronger. Let's take a walk around the new Corvette with Auto Week's own Corvette expert, Dale Jewett. Well, Ken, they've been working on it for about three and a half years, they say. And if you wanted to see where they got some inspiration from, there was a concept car about five years ago called Stingray. Right, I remember that. that. Actually ended up in the Transformers movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once as a coupe and once as a convertible. So if you're a fan of the Transformers movies. My kids love it. You'll take a look at this car and see some inspiration, okay? Being a designer, I'm looking at all of the angles that I'm seeing here. It's not as smooth as the old Corvette was. The designers have taken a lot of effort to, to put in some sharp lines and, and some flat surfaces on the car to give it a really complex surface look that you have to kind of get close to the car to really see. There's a lot going on in the hood design of this new car. Uh, a lot of character lines, a lot of emotion. It's, it's a car that looks fast just while it's standing still. You look along the other edge of the car, and, and normally with fenders, you know, it's very rounded, it's very gentle, or there's, there's a real sharp break. They, they rounded the fender up, and then there's actually a flat ledge yeah. along the, the sides of the car that lead down into the headlamp unit. The headlights have definitely a, a, a new styling treatment for Corvette. So you're gonna get high intensity discharge headlamps, and this is standard on the base car. Along with, there's a row of LED lamps along the side. And then you have this cool little angled hockey stick bar in the headlamp that sort of uses indirect LED lighting to give it a very unique forward look. What I want is I want to pull up behind somebody and they go, what the hell is that behind me? That definitely will happen. So does the vent really work on this car? It is an active vent. The actual goal is to have about a third of the airflow coming from the car go over the top and send two thirds of the airflow underneath. Okay. You know, you, you look at the shape of a Corvette and it's roughly the shape of an airplane wing. So if you don't do something like this, the problem is you get lift or vacuum on the top end of the hood and it tends to want to bring the front of the car up. Well, if you let the air come up through this vent, it helps keep the nose stuck to the ground for a car with this level of performance and owners who love to take that car out on the track, this is a huge difference. The Corvette designers and the Corvette developers went to the Corvette race team and used all their computer software for, for, for getting this design, to get airflow up and through the hood, to get airflow through the wheel wells to cool the brake ducts. And when we get around to the back, you'll see they even used a technique from the race car to, to, to put air in through the back quarter panels, mm -hmm. not only for the brakes, but they have coolers back there for the, tram, the automatic transmission and the locking differential. This is a lot more slanted than it was on the previous it, vehicle. It's, it's very angled, and again, it's an active air vent. The, the, the race team helped them design the look of this, and it helps bring more air out from underneath the hood of the car, as well as through the brake ducts to keep the brakes cooler. 140, 150. Top I'm, speed for this car? Yeah, what am I looking at? You're probably looking at a buck 80, a buck 90. Yeah, okay. Another aero thing that they worked on really hard were, were the, the door mirrors for this car. You'll see, you look at them, they like, wow, those stick out kind of wide. Well, you know, the, the vet sits pretty low on the road, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, as a driver, you need to use these mirrors a whole lot to, to avoid other people who may not be seeing you. One of the things we haven't seen in a long time is this window towards the back. That's true. For 2014, the Corvette gets rear quarter windows. Uh, that's a design element that hasn't been seen on the car since 1962. Starting in 63 with the legendary split window coupe, uh, one of the things they wanted to do was enhance the rearward visibility of the car. So instead of the basket handle, you've got now quarter windows that you can actually see out. There's a big vent on either side of the car, right here, right behind the driver and right behind the passenger. Okay. It has a couple of important purposes. It gets air back down in here so they can cool the brakes. But on high performance versions of the car, with either the automatic transmission or if you choose the Z51 performance package, they actually put a cooler in the back corners of the car. One for the automatic transmission, one for the electronic limited slip differential. 
So, so the air is now being ducted through there and it comes out by the taillights, but it helps keep those fluids cool. Okay. In the previous car, they would actually have to run a line from the radiator up front to the back of the car to keep those elements cool, and it contributed to more heat getting into the passenger compartment of the car. They changed the rake on the back of this a little bit too. I'm noticing there's a little bit of a difference point. Well, the glass in the hatch has gotten a lot smaller okay. than what the car has been for the last couple of generations. The previous two generations of the Corvette had a, had a humongous glass hatch that was very styled. But to incorporate this quarter window, and I, I think to, to really give us a heritage look, I mean, the 63 car is really important in, in Corvette design history. They didn't want to recreate that car, but, but you've always been able to see some sort of element of that. I noticed the double bubble is still here on the roof. Well, that's a styling element that the Corvette has had for its removable roof panel, by the way. So if you want to get some open air motoring, that comes off. It adds character, it helps guide the air over the roof, and ostensibly, if you ever take the car out on the track and you have to put on a helmet, it provides you a little bit of extra headroom. It's worth noting that for the C7, the, the, the panel here is now made of, of lightweight carbon fiber material, just the same as the hood. The center section is left clear. They, they clear coat it so you can see the carbon fiber weave, which is what they've been doing on the current ZR1 Corvette. Mm -hmm. But then they, they take the time to actually paint the edges of the panel, the body color, so it blends seamlessly into the car and it doesn't look like it's just a chunk of carbon fiber tacked onto the rest of the car. So Dale, in every spy shot we've seen of this car, the back has been heavily camoed. This is probably the biggest, most dramatic change of, of the entire car. And the first thing you'll note is there are no more four round tail lamps, which is a design signature of the Corvette that goes all the way back to the 1963 car. Yes, there are still four tail lamp units, but they have more of an octagonal shape to them. Chevy is doing this intentionally. They want to attract a new buyer, a younger buyer, to the Corvette family. More importantly, it's more than just taillights, because if you take a close look, there's, there's actually a vent to the side of the taillight, and there's a vent along the bottom edge. We talked earlier about the vents in the rear parts of the car getting air down to those coolers. Mm -hmm. That's where that vent, that's where the air comes out of the car. So they're actually active, real vents built into the fascia. They're not just there for looks. These are some badass big exhaust outlets. Okay. Um, you know, the aftermarket has made great business in taking Corvette exhaust systems and, and beefing them up. Here's a really beefy system coming from the factory. And it's going to have the active exhaust system that GM has been using for the last few years. So, you know, when you get into it, a baffle opens up inside the exhaust and things get louder. Uh, taking it a step further, they actually have a two-stage system that's going to be available for this new Corvette. And there's even a switch on the dash that will let you lock the system open and be as loud as you can possibly stand whenever you want. So it's going to be loud, but is it going to be fuel efficient? It's going to be very fuel efficient. This car rolls with a new generation of the small block V8 that's going to be more powerful and get you better fuel economy. It's going to use direct fuel injection and variable valve timing. So there will be times when your Corvette is cruising down the highway with a V4 instead of a V8 under the hood. You'll have a choice of a six-speed automatic transmission or a new seven-speed manual transmission. And in the manual transmission, those top three gears are all overdrive gears. The current car is rated at about 26 miles per gallon when you're just cruising on the highway. This car will do better than that. I would not be surprised to see it get close to 30 miles per gallon on the highway cruising mode. How is the interior? The interior is completely redone and for all the criticism that Corvette takes for its interior, there are no analog gauges in this car. There's a giant screen behind the steering wheel, there's a giant screen in the center of the dash. The entire thing is wrapped in either leather with aluminum or some vinyl pieces. This one is definitely a world-class car. So Dale, tell me about this logo. This badge is a historic moniker to the car, and it's actually a key thing for the 2014 Corvette because they're going to bring back the Stingray name. This is a name they haven't used on Corvette since 1976. Okay. Back then it was used as a script. And actually you talk with the GM design staff and there was a real debate about whether to call this car a Stingray or not. And Ed Welburn, who's the head of the GM design universe, said, only if you can prove to me that this car is a significant advance ahead in terms of technology, in terms of design, in terms of, of, of the complete package, would he let them use the Stingray name on the car?
It's a signal of how much improved this car is over the previous generation. Is there anything you don't know about this car? You know, Ken, the only thing I really don't know about this car is the price. And Chevy hasn't said yet. But what they will say is, is if you can afford the current car, you'll be able to afford this one. Catch all the latest auto enthusiast news at AutoWeek.com, in AutoWeek magazine and iPad edition. Talk with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at AutoWeek USA.